As well as holding the title of being the fastest bird in the world, the peregrine falcon is also one of the world's most widespread and successful bird of prey species. This cosmopolitan species of raptor is found worldwide with the exception of a few locations including Antarctica, and across this global range there are at least 19 subspecies of peregrine, with each varying considerably in size, coloration and latitude. In North America and Canada, there are three distinct peregrine races found across this range, the most widespread of which being the Anatum peregrine, which is also one of the most striking in coloration. Living further north is the aptly named Tundra peregrine, which is usually smaller and paler than the Anatum, and is known to migrate huge distances across the continent to South America, and then finally the Peels peregrine, the largest subspecies in the world on average, and a peregrine I have discussed in great detail on a previous video. Found across most of North America and into Mexico, the Anatum peregrine, sometimes referred to in North America as the Duck Hawk, is similar in size to, if not marginally smaller, than the nominate subspecies of peregrine, that being the peregrine seen in Britain and across Eurasia. Just like the peregrines found on the other side of the Atlantic, the Anatum is an especially adaptable bird, found across a range of different habitats, ranging from mountainous regions to wetlands, and also, of course, urban areas, including cities. Peregrines are especially revered as falconry birds, and the Anatum is no exception, with many American falconers claiming them to be one of, if not the best, long wings or falcons they have flown. Individuals across different parts of the continent do sometimes vary in coloration, but in certain areas, particularly in the western regions, mature individuals can have a striking orangey-red underside and chest, contrasting a slate or bluish dorsal side, making them very impressive and colourful falcons to look at. There used to be, however, a variant of Anatum living on the eastern side of the continent that is sadly extinct nowadays and is known only from select photographs and preserved specimens. It was known as the Eastern Rock Anatum Peregrine, and in many ways it was similar to Anatum still alive today, yet also quite distinct. Based on what information remains about this bird, their coloration seemed most like that of some modern Anatum seen today, with a very pale barred underside and a darker dorsal side, a type of coloration known as countershading. However, there were some noticeable differences in the plumage coloration of eastern rock anatoms that made them quite distinct from some of the modern anatoms today. It seems that these peregrines had especially darkened coloration on the dorsal side of their plumage, especially on the head and neck area with the jet black coloration on their heads appearing to extend slightly further than that of other peregrines. Their pale undersides appear to be mostly whitish in appearance, although some individuals may have had hints of rufous in their feathers. Another perhaps more infamous feature about eastern rock peregrines that made them stand out was their impressive size, with a number of historical records indicating that some individuals may rank as one of the largest peregrines in the world. One particularly large individual was captured along the east coast of the USA by Falconer Al Nye. This female rock peregrine weighed around 54 ounces or 1,530 grams. For context, most modern female Anatum peregrines weigh between 800 and 1,100 grams or 1 1.8 to 2.4 pounds. This was a monster peregrine with an especially muscular build and as you can see by this old photograph, noticeably large talons and feet. The largest peregrine subspecies on average alive today is the Peel's peregrine, with many larger individuals reaching between 1100 and 1500 grams, similar to that recorded for the eastern rock peregrines as previously mentioned, though it is possible, as in any case, that some individuals may have gotten even larger still. Together, both of these peregrine subspecies represent not only the largest peregrines in the world, but also, it seems, one of the largest falcon species in the world, with some of these gigantic individuals rivaling or even slightly exceeding some gerfalcons in weight. 
Famous 20th century American falconer and educator Morley Nelson appears to have been one of the only people known to have flown a rock and art and peregrine using falconry techniques, at least regarding specific details. In 1947, he was given a large female rock and artem, who was also an imprint, that is, raised around humans at a young age, and she came to be known as Blackie likely in reference to the dark feather coloration as previously discussed of this subspecies. She was also an especially large and powerful bird, with Morley even stating himself that at one point he had a female jur falcon, which is usually considered to be the largest falcon species in the world on average, and yet even she was stated to be smaller than Blackie, whom he still had at the time. Over the following hunting seasons, she proved to be an exceptional hunter, and like other falconry birds, it was when she was flying and hunting in the field that her true physical power and speed became evident. She would wait on with great commitment, circling as high as a thousand feet up in the sky, and then stooping down on her prey, reaching those great speeds that peregrines are infamous for. Over the course of her hunting career, she captured a remarkable diversity of avian quarry, ranging from crows to even fully grown Canadian geese, often knocking them down and dispatching them with a single blow. So North America was once home to two separate variants of the Anatum peregrine subspecies, the Western Rocky Mountain Anatum peregrines and these mighty Eastern Rock Anatums, living on the East Coast. However, from the mid-20th century onwards, this relatively localised population of peregrines suffered a noticeable decline. These population declines were often attributed at this point to severe droughts occurring in parts of the eastern peregrines range, with many former breeding locations and eyries being deserted. The real blow came in the form of DDT, a pesticide heavily used at the time, usually in agriculture, which made its way up the food chain negatively affecting top predators like the peregrine after feeding on prey exposed to the substance. DDT didn't usually kill fully grown peregrines outright, but when these chemicals accumulated within a bird at high doses, it could cause various other internal problems, most notably thinning of the eggshells in breeding birds. For those birds already trying to repopulate an already declining breeding population, this had disastrous effects, for once the developing eggs were laid by the female falcon, she would inevitably attempt to brood the eggs in order to incubate them, but the thinning eggshells were incapable of supporting her body weight, making the eggs easily crushed and destroyed. Entire clutches of eggs could be lost as a result of this significantly jeopardising the recovery of the peregrine's breeding population at the time. DDT has been one of the main causes of peregrine population decline across the world in recent decades, with these populations in parts of North America, including the eastern rock anatoms, along with peregrines present in much of Britain and Europe, appearing to be the most strongly affected. Though the peregrine species itself, worldwide as a whole, was, contrary to popular belief, not wholly endangered as some sources would suggest. Even so, as a result of these catastrophic effects, the eastern rock anatom was essentially completely extirpated from its range. In 1964, all 275 iris were checked, and tragically, all of them were abandoned. When Professor Tom Cade, once quoted as the father of peregrine conservation, founded the Peregrine Fund in 1970, there was a debate that only pure eastern rock peregrines would be reintroduced to the eastern Appalachian mountain chain. Unfortunately, this wasn't an option, as there were no available breeding pairs of eastern anatoms known of, nor any pure breeding individuals in captivity known at this time. Largely through intense captive breeding and reintroduction projects via the Peregrine Fund, however, a lot of effort was made to try and reinstate populations of peregrines on the eastern coast of America, where the rock anatom was once present. The peregrines being bred and reintroduced in this project, however, were descended from a variety of different peregrine races that falconers had at the time, though reinstating the former population of peregrines in this region was the priority, even if the resulting birds were not pure anatomers before, though they were still clearly peregrines overall, 
and not a mixture of two different falcon species. Some of these races included the South American or Cassini peregrine, as well as Indian Shaheens and other races from both the Old and New World. Though much effort was made in the captive breeding to ensure that the birds being released resembled the real-life anatoms as closely as possible. If intensive conservation efforts like these in conjunction with falconers wasn't made, it is possible to some degree that the peregrine may have remained locally extinct in parts of the eastern territories of North America, the former range of the mighty rock anatom. Conservation efforts such as this, alongside DDT and other pesticides being banned in the later 20th century, have enabled peregrine numbers to recover, and nowadays, including on the eastern coast, peregrines are now quite abundant. The peregrines now present on the eastern side of North America do have similarities with standard anatoms in terms of size and coloration, including the characteristic dark feathers on the head giving them an almost cap-like appearance, and the reduced amount of white on the side of the head compared to other peregrine races. The recovery of peregrine populations in recent decades across the Northern Hemisphere is a true sign of conservation success, and it is truly fantastic that the world's fastest animal is both surviving and thriving in the wild and in captivity. It is, however, also tragic that alongside at least one other subspecies known to have died out in recent decades, the eastern rock anatom peregrine is no more. One can only reflect on what records survive about this bird, and marvel at this species' incredible power and speed, but also its beauty, one of the largest and most impressive peregrine subspecies known to have existed.